Yeah, g'day folks, just a very quick update on um, a few of my uh, rarer trees for Melbourne and how they're going. And uh, this is a longan, a col koloha, or, um, something like that. And um, setting nice uh, flowers, flower buds um, early, despite the uh, unseasonable cool summer we're having um, it's still set fruit quite early so we might get um, some good fruit off that this year it's an air layered tree and uh, I'm letting it grow out at the bottom to have more of a, a bushy shape so that's early summer for the longan and here's the pomelo, Namroy variety. And uh, what I found with most of my citrus is uh, while they're setting fruit, they, um, the leaves start to look a bit crappy. But um, you can see there, get there, it's got um, quite some good uh, fruit set on it. So the leaves are looking a bit um, shabby at the moment, but I think once the fruit takes, then it'll start sending out new, new growth. So it looks like we'll get to try our first pomelo, Namroy, this year. And this is a grafted wampy neem pei variety, which is meant to be the, uh, the sweeter wampy. And... Um, that's already setting flower flower set, so um, that's uh, nice and early too. So pretty hopeful that we'll get some fruit off that one. And then over here, the seedling one, which is um, looking great, but uh, no flower set yet. But it's, um, the tree itself is looking very good. The bacon avocado has come back with a vengeance. At uh, end of winter, end of spring, it didn't look to crash up, but um, it's uh, really um, getting some awesome growth on it now. As is its neighbour, the uh, Hass, which um, getting some uh, fruit set all over and plenty of um it's added plenty of height and width too so happy with those two the lead jujube absolutely loves the spot it's in i reckon we'll get about uh, 30 to 50 fruit off this tiny tree and i marked on the uh, post here see that mark it's there I marked that a week ago so uh, in a week it's um, grown that much and it's only the start of summer so I think that's going to be a beautiful tree that one the pepino and what can I say about that it's just uh, going sensational where it is there I've lost count of how many fruits on it. I'll just show you from the back how many fruit is um, forming on. And the fruits are uh, out the sides, all through the centre. And uh, got some big ones in here. Right through, so um, probably get over 100 fruit off this. This setup, so. Um, I've realised they only grow 1.2 metres tall, so this um, setup's actually ended up working out perfectly because uh, it's about 1.2 metres tall. So despite all the uh, wind that we've had this year, believe it or not, this persimmon, Fuyu, only dropped about five flowers and hung on to the rest. 
So, um, yeah, there'd be hundreds of uh, fruit on this one. She's a nice addition. And this dwarf plum is a real standout performer. It's um it's got more fruit than we we're, we're gonna be able to keep up with. And they're all big too, so um move, removing the apricot that was competing with it's um worked wonders for this tree. So this was the tree I was worried about because it um cost me quite a bit of money this tree it was uh, eight years old it's a Kempong white sapoti self-pollinating and uh, it's about eight years old and um, the fellow I brought it off um, looked after it quite well it cost me about um, 55 bucks a year to save me all that time waiting for fruit and when it um, when it when I transplanted it, there was a bit of uh, root disturbance because uh, the way it was quite heavy, and when I tried to lift it into its hole, I uh, damaged the root ball quite a bit. And I was really worried about it, and it had some flowers on it when I put it in months ago, but um, they dropped, so I was quite worried I wouldn't get fruit this year. But um, it's uh, let's see in here, it's come back and putting out lots of new growth and lots of new um, flower buds so uh, that tree is probably going to be the showpiece of the garden when it really settles in I, I uh, check that one every day without fail a beautiful tree. I found with um, both of my black sapotis with the the seedling and this grafted one which is a colossal variety that um, while they were young still with the green stem on them they really hated direct sun. You see all the leaves were curling up and uh, the seedling one was doing the same so I, uh, I just made this, um, mm -hmm. just this little uh, shade shelter for it out of some bamboo, and pretty much three or four days later, it started getting um, good growth, and so did the seedling that's in a, that's under the carport. So um, just a tip, just while they've still got a green, a green uh, trunk on them, they don't really like um, direct sun. It hasn't even been that hot. But uh, yeah, they really went backwards just when we got to about 26, 27 degrees Celsius. The mango's uh, starting to wake up. These are just Bowens. I had a Glen arrive today, which is um, just going to stay under there for a bit. In the background, you can see it there. But the bananas have really taken off. I brought this... Um, this one here after seeing it on uh, Elisa's video and um, from a local nursery put it in the ground and uh, it's got a tropical size uh, leaf on it now but yeah I love the uh, the look of the banana patch we've got a lot of babies coming up or pups coming up under the dwarf ones and they're looking quite healthy too, so uh, yeah, happy we'll put them in. Plenty of fruit set on uh, this fajoa, pineapple guava. So um, we only got three fruit off it last year. And it was the first year in the ground, but um, yeah, this year we'll probably get, looks like about 60 or 70. Happy with that. The uh, dwarf gyro persimmon went well. It uh, hung on to two fruits, which uh, 
a bit more advanced than the um, Fuyu, so I think it's a bit more of an early uh, season variety. And all of the pomegranates are doing really well this year. So this is the wonderful, two years old. And uh, should, should get a few fruit off this. Some of them flowers are looking quite healthy. And move over here to the, one of the, uh, I think this is a seedling. Doing well. The Elsh. It's got quite a few flowers. The only one that doesn't have any flowers is the uh, Ben Hur. So we'll keep persevering with the Ben Hur. And uh, this is the um, orange Krumi Charmer. And that really likes where it is. The afternoon sun sort of uh, leaves it alone. The shade from the pergola. And um, yeah, I reckon uh, that's going to be a, a beautiful looking tree. So there's lots more uh, fruit trees. I think we're up to about 80, 83 or so trees in the garden now. But I just wanted to show you the standout ones, the rarer ones. And uh, I'll finish the video uh, with, a, with a really quick tour of the um, nursery that I go to. Because uh, when I went there to pick up a dragon fruit pot, he, um, he had a lychee tree with fruitlets on it. Which I've never seen in Melbourne before. So I thought I'd, um, I'd make a video on that. To finish this one off with. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah, g'day folks. I'm uh, just at a nursery I go to to get all my um, advanced trees. I'm just here browsing today and just buying a pot for a dragon fruit, but I just wanted to show you um, uh, this is in uh, Melbourne, the very start of summer, and here's a lychee tree, a lychee tree, and it's uh, setting fruit. So, um, check that out, it's setting fruit all over, so um, just speaking to the uh, owner and he said that he used to have a, a large tree that would um, produce full size fruit, so uh, there you go, it can be done, it's a, a lychee setting fruit in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Beautiful. There you go, you've got uh, dozens of um, really large uh, mountain sour sop just starting to wake up in Melbourne. All the five year old trees. Yeah, I won't film the whole nursery this time, but um, these are all uh, very advanced uh, hog plums starting to wake up. Guessing around five or six years old. So yeah, it's um, he's always got uh, the best stuff here. It's um, for a plant addict, it's uh, very addictive walking through here. Yes.